What up, fam? Welcome to Coffee and Pie, episode two with Baker's Joint. Um, Y'all got your coffee? Got your pot? Um, welcome, comrades. Welcome, friends, one and all. Uh, real, we got a lot to talk about today, but I'm going to try to keep it brief because I got all sorts of other stuff to do today, and yesterday's episode took forever to upload because it was so long. Um, so, real quick. Music Bump, uh, there's a semi-local that I think you should check out, it's Ryan Harvey and Riot Folk, um, the song is Peace, Justice, and Anarchy, and I'll post a link for you, I think you should check it out, because it's dope, and it's gonna make you feel empowered, at least it makes me feel empowered, um, for a national artist you should bump, uh, for today, I recommend Rise Against, um, any album, really, but, um, Revolutions Per Minute or The Sufferer and The Witness are my two faves, and the poetry of Tim McCrillith is just incredible, and that's something definitely worth bumping, um, bump it and get angry, bump it and get inspired, bump it and get fired up. Um, that's what we need. So I am still pushing the Black Visions Collective. They're a Minneapolis-based, black-led, queer, and trans-centered organization, and they're dedicated to dismantling systems of violence. And I think that's a hell of a way to spend 10 or 15 bucks if you got 10 or 15 bucks to spend um, supporting some righteous folk. So you should do that. I'll have that link up. So let's get right into first topic which is the Springfield protest that happened yesterday um, here's what my notes say about it it was great it was lovely it was awesome there was a handful of assholes and it was great otherwise I mean and that's essentially what it was it was hundreds and hundreds of people who got together in solidarity and love to express their collective outrage at the unjust murder of George Floyd right in front of us and Maude Aubrey before that and you know the list goes on and on and on and you know that's what it was it was a bunch of people that got together in love and there was a couple assholes the only people that I saw fucking with anybody were because they were antagonized um i personally witnessed a guy indiscriminately macing the crowd he says that there was a previous attack that led to it but the video that i have seen clearly refutes that there was he was completely unprovoked and started spraying mace into people and then pulled forward and started spraying mace into more people and uh his car got bucked so <sighs> That's what solidarity looks like sometime. Um, when you come in and try to do damage to the folk, they're going to respond. Um, so that's, I, I don't really have anything else to say about that, except that I'm really proud of the folk. So there was another asshole that ran through a bunch of people, uh, broke some guy's leg. Um, he passed the police barricade in order to run over people. Um, so, this wasn't just some deal where... It's fine. It wasn't some deal where he, uh, you know, was just going about his business in traffic and there are some, ooh, there's a bunch of protesters. No, like, he had already come through once and he came through again and passed the barricades. And, like, he knew exactly what he was getting into. He wasn't in a hurry to get anywhere. All your bullshit. What about him? What if he was going to a hospital? What if he's trying to go about his day? No, he, he literally drove past the barricades into the throng of people. Because for some stupid-ass reason, the police were letting people through the whole time. Like, everybody's like, oh, we're proud of the police for setting up a barricade to let us protest. But, like, they kept filtering traffic into it for some reason. And then that traffic would get stuck there. And... I don't know. Anyways, like, the first time, the police wave you through, and you get stuck in the traffic, and you get frustrated. That's one thing. But this was this guy's at least second time through. So he knew what he was getting into. He came back to fucking antagonize and cause damage, and he ran over a kid 
and broke his leg. So, wildly irresponsible, and I'm glad his truck got fucked up. I'm glad he got fired, and I hope he gets fucking arrested. And if you don't get fucking arrested, I hope that the folk get a hold of him. So, whatever, there's that. Um, I also saw a bunch of folk coal rolling, a um, bunch of bro flakes were in the mall parking lot, and they had their Confederate flags, they had their thin blue line flags, and they're coal rolling through the lot, um, deliberately and obviously trying to antagonize folk, and the folk snatched one of them fucking rebel flags off their truck and set it on fire. There's live feed of that on this page, so that's worth checking out. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was peaceful, it was love, they didn't fuck nothing up, they, like, I've also seen people say, oh, well, this guy was just trying to join the protest, and they tried to pull him off his motorcycle, dude, everybody I saw who threw a honk and put their fist up in the air was greeted with cheers and love, if he was trying to join the protest, that's all he had to do, was honk, beep, beep, and say, yes, go, you guys, and he would have been greeted with open arms, my guess is, he's probably talking some shit, I don't know. I didn't see that. I cannot confirm or deny. I can only confirm the general attitude and activities that took place all day. And it was nothing but love and solidarity. Especially if you showed love and solidarity in the first place. Um, then you got nothing but support from the folks. So, that's, I thought it was great. I'm super proud of Springfield. Um, Y'all showed out and you turned up and... Fuck, let's do it again. There is another protest today at the same place from 3 till, I believe. I'll get some more details on that. I may or may not be able to go as much as I'd love to. I've also been neglecting household shit so that I can do this protest um, shit. And it's getting to a point where I've got to, like, i got to take care of stuff around here. So, you know, family first. You gotta self-care. Um, you're no good to the cause if you're draining yourself completely so i gotta go down to the in-laws and do some yard work i gotta do some yard work around here and frankly i gotta spend time with my family so i may or may not be there we'll see um but y'all should be there if you can and stream it and get lots of video of the antagonistic fucks and you know that's how it is so moving on to my next topic um Let's let the vilification of anarchists begin. Woo. Your news feeds are probably full of, if you're like me anyways, um, officials and non-officials and everyone else currently just completely vilifying anarchists all over the place. So oh, it's outside agitators everywhere. It's anarchists. They're the ones smashing all the windows. They're the ones doing this. They're the ones doing that. You know what? That's fine. Um, except that probably not true and I mean there's anarchists on the ground sure are they fighting police sure did they bring medics sure are they smashing corporate buildings and property probably um, are they smashing minority and community owned properties there might have been a few cases of it happening but I sincerely doubt it um, and I'll tell you why because that completely goes against their ethos and you know these folk live their ethos if you've ever met hardcore anarchists then you know they they live their principles in a way that few people can match um and destroying community-owned property is completely against their ethos so there's that. Hang on, I'm gonna go fix my dog. She's all tangled up. Stupid dog. I love her though. Ugh. Tangled in a tree. There she is. She's free now. She's in her seat. Say hi, Timber. No? Okay. She's not gonna say hi. But, anyways, so yeah, um,. I mean, if you've met anarcho folk, then you probably know. But like these people, they're they're more committed to this cause. They live committed to the cause. Um, 
they live, breathe, sleep, drink, their praxis every day. I've never met people more committed. And, you know, it's, it'd be like saying, you know, all these pro labor guys went in and, you know, busted up a, you know, labor rally. Why would they do that? That's like incomplete defiance of everything they stand for. So, I have a hard time buying it. Um, there's this great tweet by Inorganic African Feminist. Um, at, I'm probably going to butcher this, at Zatsamudi. Zamudi? Z-T-S-A-M-U-D-Z-I. Zamudzi? I don't know. Um, if y'all are out there and see this, by all means, uh, give me the correct pronunciation. I should have looked it up. I'm sorry, I didn't. Anyways, the tweet reads, quote, uh, This paternalistic use of outside agitator, in quotes, um, is doing some impossibly heavy lifting to mask your terror of black people. That Langston Hughes quote about, Beware the day they change their mind. Um, the spook of the outside agitator serves to refuse and rebuke the possibility of the arrival of that day. Further, she goes on to point out that outside agitator is also historically anti-Semitic. It suggests naive, pliable blacks were being led astray into disruptive communistic thought and behaviors under the influences of anti-capitalist Jewish Bolshevism. So there's that to be aware of, too. What's that? <laughs>